Thanks. Briefly, I want to thank Cameron Balian Festival for inviting us. We love being here. Um, we love having you. Thank you. And thank you for your time. You should try and be efficient. I have some friends who came with me. Uh, Scott Z. Burns is here. I hope. Yes. We uh, have a lovely family here. Nonso, Nikki, Jessica, please. Um, we have another trio, um, Gary, Antonio, and Meryl Street. Who am I missing? I hope so. Before we open it up to the audience, I'll kick things off if that's all right. Maybe we'll start with Scott and Steven. Uh, could you talk about the genesis of the project? I know it begins with Jake Bernstein's book, Secrecy World, but you take a pretty different approach than the book did. Go. Uh, I was aware of Jake's book. Um, I was sent sort of a, a brief on it. And I was also aware of, of the leak, obviously, like most of you. And Stephen and I had both seen a movie that we love called Wild Tales by a guy named Damien Ziffrin. And yeah, he definitely deserves that and a lot more. Um, and it was about a form of human behavior. And when I kind of started looking at the, the research around the Panama Papers, I, I wanted to write about this and about economic injustice. Um, and Stephen had given me a book called Thieves of State that I read that deals with corruption. And you know, he's always told me that I should try and write things that are different. So um, I asked him if he wanted to, to do this, and thankfully he said, yeah. That's all true. <laughs> Meryl, my next question is for you. I'm wondering if you could talk about what attracted you to the film as a whole, but also the rather unusual role or roles that you got to play. Uh, well, I, um, I wanted to work with Steven Soderbergh since uh, I saw Sex Lives videotape. I mean, he's like uh, such an amazing uh, broad curiosity about lots of things and uh, great stylist. So um, yeah, I wanted to work with him, these guys. <laughs> but I also, I don't know, I thought it, <laughs> the construct of, because you're, you're re real people, but I was playing a, a fictional person, but my, my character, the impact on her was sort of more real in, in the film, and, and I liked uh, representing how this gross, uh, these gross practices, they're just not abstract things that um, rich people do to each other. They really have a, a knock-on effect right down the line, and um, People's lives are, are um, affected. Uh, people died to bring this story uh, forward. The, there's a scene that Stephen, you shot, where the, the guy who owns the boat company really did. He, he took a boat out and um, tied the anchor to his ankle and jumped off because he felt so bad about losing all these people you know, on Lake George. So, Anyway, yeah, I could go on for days. <laughs> uh, Antonio and Gary, you do get to play two rather infamous real characters, but in a very playful kind of eccentric way because you're also storytellers within the movie. Could you talk about that approach? Uh, well, there were two aspects uh, that were very interesting for me this term to come to the movie, and uh, one was, uh, you know, just Maggie was talking about that, how 
all these policies and this very complicated Machiavellic artifact of tax section uh, all around the world and the, all, the, all the tricks of all these companies uh, are operating. It's, it was important just to, because movies uh, and, and art in general may just serve many different purposes and one of them definitely just to make people reflect about the time in which we are living and how these affect everybody. The second uh, it was uh, the structure of the movie itself, the amount of actors and the quality of them that I was going to work with. Uh, director is my second movie with Steven, and his proposal, you know, I mean, he was just uh, proposing to do something that was out of the box, that was not uh, normal. Gary and I, we had to talk to the camera. We, we, it was a completely different work or anything that I have done. Uh, before. Uh, so all of those things, this package together was unbelievably attractive to me from yeah, the beginning. It was a, it was a, a really interesting way of um, uh, the, 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 the structure or, and style, if for want of a better word, um, of this piece. It's, it's a way, it's a wonderful delivery system. The, the farcicalness, the farce of it, or the heightened reality of it, I felt was a wonderful way, a delivery system of giving the, the medicine, you know, through entertaining and, and, and really making pe pe people laugh. And like, and like Meryl, I wanted to work with, um, I, I too liked Sex, Lies and Videotape, <laughs> wanted to work with this man. So it was um, a fantastic opportunity where you get to work with, where you get to work with a director like Stephen on a piece of material like this, I don't think there's an actor on God's earth that would not want to work with Meryl Streep. <laughs> and um, and uh, then I met this guy. <laughs> and we fall in love. love. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting married approximately. Come here. To the rest of the cast, Nikki, Jessica, and Nanzo, you get to form a completely different sort of section of the film's uh, narrative. Could you talk about uh, the characters you play? Well, yeah. I mean, Charles, this billionaire guy who propositions his daughter with this cr incredible shell company that evaporates into nothing. I think, um, I think it's, first of all, a round of applause to Steven Soderbergh for making an amazing movie. I... And thank you for having us here at TIFF. You really know how to put on a great festival. You really do. Um, this movie was, is, is really important because it really shines a light on an important serious subject. As Gary was saying, it gives you the light-hearted comedy, the fast pace, and gives you the sweetener to be able to swallow the pill. Um, but I think the awareness that this movie brings is really important. And for me, that was the, the attraction of being involved in something like this, you know? And it's a great character to play, and it was an, an honor to do so. And I love that it was this domestic drama in the middle of it, and it was a sort of very intimate story about how corruption invades a family and how, you know, wanting to preserve what you have, I think we can all identify with that, wanting to carry on enjoying your life. You know, you do anything to save that, including uh, compromising your own morals. I thought that was really powerful. Um, Nikki spoke about compromising your own morals, and I think um, my character does that. You know, she's the sweet sort of university child, but you know, when the idea of money comes into play, she's very much her um, father's daughter, <laughs> and she wants to see a lawyer. Um, so I, I just hope this. Uh, this movie also brings this issue to light for millennials and the younger generation um, because I think it is a subject that affects so many people globally, but not a lot of people know about it. Um, and not a lot of people know about how it's affected people. So. If there are any questions in the audience, please raise your hands. Yes, go ahead. I'll repeat on mic. So the question is for everyone. Uh, through working on this film, uh, what have you learned about the power of money uh, in the corrupt world? 
Oh, you mean, that it, well, let's be clear, it's a real thing. Like, it's a thing we gotta figure out. Um, and I think the first, the only first step I can think of is to demand some kind of transparency, you know. Um, but it's, uh, we got a lot of work to do, <laughs> so. Does anyone want to add anything about the power of money? Well, I, I, I would say, um, I don't think the film, correct me if I'm wrong, is saying that rich people are bad. I think what the film is saying is that the regulations that control how they deal with their money are very bad. And I think it's down for us to have more clarity on what those regulations should be um, and for us to lobby our, our governments, whether it be overseas or here or in the States, for the regulation that will allow it to be a level playing field for everybody. And I think films like this helps that to happen. I want to make sure we get to more audience members. So yes, right in front, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm Megan. Thank you so much for being here to learn through this subject. Um, my name is Yara. I'm an actress, and I wanted to ask you about your experience of acting in the Great in the Fourth Wall. How was it? Uh, was it fun? Was it kind of tricky? Make a sense of that. Question is about the experience of breaking the fourth wall in your performances. I've always wanted to talk directly to my audience. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, it was very cool. And one thing that I love about Stephen, we, um, one of the many things about the way he directs is that uh, he lets you try your absolutely worst ideas. <laughs> and, and says, yeah, that might work. So, in terms of directly addressing the audience, when we knew we were gonna use the speech of the whistleblower, John Doe, at the very end of the film, um, it was hard because it doesn't sound like talking. It was a letter, you know, and it was, it was written and it's sort of thickly written in uh, a language that doesn't sound like talking. And, I knew it was going to be two characters, but I thought, well, why don't we make it three, and I'll be me, <laughs> and, um, and the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> so really, four characters. <laughs> and only paid for one, really. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions in the balcony? I don't want to leave you out. Go ahead, yes. Uh, I have a question. I noticed that, first of all, amazing movie. But a question with regards to the model of the yacht that was in there. I noticed that was the Top Princess. Is there any reason why you chose to use that model of that particular yacht? Huh. I, have, to do I don't know. Though. I think everyone might have heard the question. It was about the uh, specific model of yacht that was uh, used. <laughs> Scott's going to take this. <laughs> well, um, first of all, I have no idea how you would have noticed that. So you have some explaining to do to all of us. <laughs> Um, but my understanding, and Jake, if I'm wrong, stop me from going to jail, um, <laughs> is that at the beginning of Mossack Fonseca, there was an arrangement that they were trying to strike. They were representing different people. 
Um, and it was about a transaction involving that boat, which subsequent to that deal, it wasn't that deal, but one of the participants in that deal ended up selling that boat to the person you're talking about. More questions. <laughs> Hands. Yes, go ahead. One of you two. <laughs> Last one. So the question is for Meryl uh, to reflect on uh, your acting career and, and where you're at. And how great I am. And how great you are, <laughs> that you're the GOAT. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just talk about that. Um, I'm just gonna take some time, I can sit down. Um, I was born in Summit, New Jersey. And um, I'm really honored to be here at Toronto. <laughs> I, I love, I love Canada. Oh man, doesn't everybody? I'm moving here soon, probably we all are. Well, I think that's a great note to go out on. Thank you to all of our talented guests. Thank you so much for thank being you. here in thank Toronto. You. Oh, thank you, thank you. Don't forget to vote for the Audience Award and enjoy the rest of the festival.